It turns out symmetry is also useful to testing whether molecules exhibit optical activity, or another way to say that is whether molecules are chiral. Now just to refresh our collective memories about what chirality is, if you have, for example, let's draw in, try to draw this in 3D, we have a carbon that's bound to four different things. Let's go into the plane, into the plane. Let's uh, just use, say, hydrogen, <laughs> chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. If you put a mirror plane here and look at the mirror image of uh, this carbon that has uh, four different things bound to it, so the mirror image there, the CL will be here, the H will still be here, and the F will be here, and then the BR, the bromine, that's not, <laughs> not borons, bromine. You now try to superimpose this mirror image on top of this original image, and what you find is that you can't do it. And so what that means is that um, this molecule is, is there, this molecule exhibits chirality, the, su uh, the mirror image is not superimposed on the original image, and chiral compounds give rise to optical activity. All right, so that's what chirality is. Now, a molecule cannot be chiral, and that's called achiral, if it has a reflection plane. Why is that? Well, if it has a reflect, well, recall, first of all, that if you have a molecule and you do some symmetry operation on it, oh, let's say, uh, just for example, C2 rotation, and if you get the molecule back again in the same place, this means that C2 is a symmetry operation, uh, or C2 is a symmetry element, uh, of this of the point group that this molecule belongs in. But the key point here is when you take a molecule and you do a symmetry operation, the spatial arrangement of atoms in the molecule is uh, the same before and after that symmetry operation. All right, well, let's try. Uh, now we want to show that uh, suppose a molecule were chiral, would it have a reflection plane? And we'll show that no, it won't, and therefore the molecule can't be chiral. All right, so to do that, let's go to this uh, site here, and here is methane. All right, now suppose, and of course, methane is not chiral, but suppose uh, this were not methane, and suppose you had, say, like we had here, hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. Hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. And now we say that there's a reflection plane. Uh, let's put... Uh, See if we can find the right reflection plane to put in there. Um, let's try. <laughs> one of these will work. There we go, that one. All right, let's try this reflection plane. All right, so remember that uh, for the two enantiomers, what did we say this one was? Uh, so when we mirror, mirror reflect, the hydrogen and the fluorine is the same, but the bromine and chlorine switch. So the bromine is here and the chlorine is here, and when you have mirror image, the chlorine is here and the bromine is, or vice versa. All right, if it contains a mirror image, that means if you switch the bromine with the uh, fluorine, or what do we say, bromine and chlorine, <laughs> if you switch bromine and fluorine, you get the same molecule. But if it's chiral, that's not the same molecule. So the fact that you have a, a reflection plane here indicates that the molecule cannot be chiral. If it were chiral, then uh, when you switch these two, you get a different molecule. You won't get the same molecule. So I hope I convinced you that if a molecule has a reflection plane, it can't be chiral. It's achiral. Uh, go here and select CI. CI is the group, the point group that has only an inversion operator. All right, so here it is. This is uh, what two uh, hydrogen, hydrogen, and I guess we got two chlorines here and two bromines here. Note that um, now what I'm going to claim is that if a molecule has an inversion center, it's 
uh, not optically active. It's not chiral. It's achiral. But you're probably wondering, oh, wait, this carbon is bound to one, two, three, four different things. And if you have a carbon that's bound to four different things, then you have a chiral uh, compound. Yes, except that <laughs> if um, this particular compound, the two, this and its mirror image, are meso compounds which do not exhibit optical activity. So that's an exception to the general rule that if you have a carbon bound to four different things, it's chiral. But for this, no, it's not. All right, so now let's look at the inversion. So it's not chiral. And if we look at the inversion, there's the inversion center. And let's invert. There we go. So if this were the mirror image here, that would be, uh, and if it were chiral, then these compounds, this particular group here, will be different from there. But when you invert, they're the same. So they, they can't be different. They have to be the same. So maybe I've convinced you that uh, if a molecule has an inversion center, then it cannot be chiral. It has to be achiral. And similarly, now if you have a reflection or a rotation followed by an inversion, in other words, if you have an SN axis, you also cannot have chirality. So those are three conditions under which you can't have chirality. So suppose a molecule uh, does not uh, have a reflection plane or inversion center or an SN axis. Well, that means that it could be chiral, but not necessarily. So if you look in terms of a, a Venn diagram, we have here a class of molecules, all molecules. Some are achiral, some are chiral. So this would be achiral. These would be chiral. And then these would be not chiral. Well, these would be achiral also. But these would be achiral because of symmetry. So there could be other achiral ones and other chiral ones, but we know because of symmetry for sure, those that have these symmetry elements in them are uh, the molecule has symmetry operations that can be performed on them because they belong to a particular point group, they have to be achiral. Okay, good. So um, let's do an example here. Let's use symmetry arguments to say whether each one of these is achiral. Here we have pyridine. Okay, pyridine, now we did this uh, previous example. We have essentially pyridine is a benzene ring without uh, a carbon, or a nitrogen substituted for a carbon. We found that this was a C2V point group. So let's uh, see if the C2V has one of these in here. All right, so C2V, one of the point groups here, C2V. All right, C2V. Oh, look, it has reflection planes, and therefore, uh, pyridine is not. So this has reflection planes, and therefore, you can say that this is not chiral. Or another way to say it is achiral. Okay, now let's look at uh, nitrobenzene. That's the second example here. So this is no. How about nitroethane? Sorry, nitroethane. All right, and nitroethane looks like this. And we said be, uh, in one of the earlier lectures that this has symmetry C1. All right, let's see what, well, we know what C1 has. That only has E. So this could be, but not necessarily, could be chiral. In fact, all C1 could be chiral. They don't have to be, but they could be. And finally, let's take a look at um, dibromomercury. That's the, so this could be chiral. How about um, dibromomercury? That's a linear molecule. Uh, this compound is linear. If we look at point groups for linear molecules, uh, linear cylindrical groups here from the Wikipedia article, we have two, that's the C infinity H 
and the uh, d infinity h, these two here. We look at this uh, point, uh, this molecule. This molecule has a center of inversion, so we're going to choose the linear group that has a center of inversion here, I. So d infinity h is the point group, and d infinity h, that's a lowercase h, okay, d infinity h. And, as we said, that has an inversion center. And an inversion center means a molecule is achiral. So this implies that uh, this is achiral. It cannot be a chiral molecule, cannot rotate light. So there's some examples of how to use symmetry in determining uh, whether a molecule is achiral or not.